Hello and welcome to another episode of the Paper Stack Podcast. I'm Brett Birkin, this is Rick Allen, and uh, we're back for another episode of something that's smart that comes out of Rick's mouth. And I'm um, here to ask some questions. So some of the things that um, you know we hear at least at conferences is like all about due diligence. There's a lot of breakout sessions about due diligence. It's mm-hmm. one of the most important things. I get questions about it all the time. We have done due diligence videos in the past where I broke down Rick's like step-by-step strategy, which um, we will link to in the description. It's a, a support article now, and it shows exactly how he does it. He's very detailed, breaks down, and even the notary wins their, their stamp when it's expired. All kinds of stuff. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah, it can get intense. It can yeah. get in depth. But for this one, we just want to know the five things that you as a note investor need to know to be a master of note to, uh, at the due diligence process. Like if, you, if you're gonna know anything, you gotta know this. And so, Rick, what's the first one that you just, you have to know due diligence? It really comes down to, it's not so much of a thing as a what, it's the, your plan. Like what are you doing, what are you buying for? Like, what's your plan? What's your plan once you buy the oh, note? No, what's your plan? Are you buying for per, um, non-performers to turn them performing? Are you buying performing loans? You know, what are you looking for? And the so reason why it's important to know this is you you want to understand, and this comes later on, but understanding the story. So you want to know what am I? what's the reason for me buying this loan because that's gonna trigger certain things that are more prevalent when you're looking at the due diligence than stuff that's maybe less important if it's you know if it's a performing loan versus a non-performing loan. Interesting. So your investment strategy. What's your investment strategy? Okay. Understand. That to me is like I always know that you know before I go into anything. But it can change based off the day. Like you know today I want non-performers or do you? No, um, not necessarily. It's not a day-to-day thing. It's, uh, it's what do I have certain capital earmarked for to rebalance portfolio. Interesting. So if you need to rebalance in a big way, you probably go for non-performing? Just depends. If I'm, if I'm heavy on the non-performing side and I'm, for instance, want to get ready for the upcoming fall of non-performing loans and I've got a bunch of performers, I'm probably going to re- start rebalancing and gearing up for the non-performing wave that's coming. Interesting. Yep. Okay. 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 So that's number one. Next thing is knowing what to ask for. Um, you got to know which documents to get in order to start pouring over them. So obviously we want the collateral file. Right. Yes. We're looking for the mortgage, the note, chain of assignments, chain of uh, allonges, um, hazard policy. You know, hazard insurance on there. Want to see that there's a hazard policy? Is that always in there? You you request it. Let me copy of the hazard policy. Uh, and then a cap, uh, uh, copy of the title policy. Mm-hmm. When was our title policy done? Um, I'm also asking for any BPOs or title reports that they've got, servicing notes, and any um, servicing notes in the payment history. Wow. I mean, that's, yep. that's you want to you want to ask for those things. Those are the that's the list of stuff that I typically require. Yeah, I mean, do they always have it? I mean, like. You're gonna, what, what, if you're, what if you don't get like the title policy? It's like, oh, there's a title policy, but I don't have it. I need a copy of it. You know, if, if there was a title policy, they probably have it at some point. You usually will run into, I don't have a title policy if it was an owner-financed loan. Right. right. Or if it's a contract for deed, because... And why would you ask for the BPO when you wanted to get that yourself? Yeah, but I want to see, you know, a couple things. One, I want to ask for their, if they give me a, a recent BPO, mm-hmm. It's going to tell me, I'm going to order my own BPO. I'm going to always verify it. But I'm going to look and ba- uh, bounce that value off oh, of theirs because that's going to be where they stand. Well, I want to bounce that value off of a, like internet value, whatever I can dig up on the internet or through my, um, you know, electronically. And then I'm going to bounce it off of somebody else mm-hmm. who's out there who I get my own BPO done. If they're trying to inflate the value on this thing, and they're you know the seller's like, no, it's worth 120, and I'm pulling up you know 85, 90, and my BPO comes back closer to mine than to theirs, you know I'm gonna say, well, you know it, it's gonna be a red flag. Versus somebody's like, hey, it's it's probably worth 85, 90, and it comes in around 80, 85, 90, 95, somewhere in there. It's like, okay, they're they're not trying to pull the wool over your eyes. Right. Almost like a litmus test. Do I trust this seller very much? Do you own the BPO company? Do you write your own BPOs? Right. Okay, so second thing most important is you got to get the document. You got to know the documents to ask for. 
You get another document to ask for, and hope you get them all. And then request them. If they don't have a, um, you know, maybe, I don't know, I, pretty much if it's self, if it's, if it's professionally serviced, you should be able to get just about everything. You should be able to get everything. Oh, and the origination file. I asked for the origination file, too. Interesting, but like a lot of times, if you're doing like a, you're buying something seller financed, they're not going to have servicing notes. A lot of times, they if don't. it's self-service, no. Yeah, a lot of self-service stuff is just. But I mean, we have some owner finance stuff that we originated, and I still put it with a professional servicer. Really? So, yeah. So there's always servicing notes on it. Yeah, I don't want to service loans. <laughs> not too much work. <laughs> no, I get you. All right, cool. What's number three? Uh, kind of touched on it, but the armchair valuation. You want to be good at getting to a base value based on things not being skewed way to the right or the left. What does that mean? I want to be able to go on the internet, I want to be able to find, like look, roughly what is this house worth? Barring that it's not been completely fixed up or there's not a tree falling through the roof, right? So it's just going to be wear and tear on the house, understood, but it's going to fall right into that, hey, um, you're trying to take the values of say like what realtor zillow realtor trulia. zillow trulia prop stream oh, yeah, I, I, forgot about prop I use a bunch of different sites to kind of look at it if it's local i'm a real estate broker so i dig in and MLS. can start yeah pulling the mls comps uh if i've got take all the values and just run a mean you know take them all and no, run a mean value no i don't i well, like the important thing is when you're looking doing an armchair value is not just to like go look at zillow and see what their zillow value is Right, because if if there's a house that's on a canal that leads out to a heavily traver, traveled river or something like that, or a body of water, and Zillow's algorithm is pulling that as a comp, but you're not on that canal, you're on that street, but not on that canal, your value is going to be artificially inflated. Mm, so what I would do is I always and I always go through, I, I copy the address, throw it into Google takes me to Zillow and then I click out of it because it'll take you right to that specific asset inside of Zillow. I click out of it and I go up in the Zillow search bar and I put that address in. And then it'll bring you back to that asset but it'll drill down onto the map, exactly of the map with you know half a mile radius or a mile radius. And then I'll look at what has sold in the last six, nine or 12 months and then I'll go look what's for sale also. Because that way I can see like, hey, this house was purchased and it was resold within eight months. Well, I'm gonna go look at both sets of pictures and say, oh, this was purchased for 55 and resold at 120. Somebody did a read a flip there. Yeah. Okay. So that, that's gonna start laying, it's gonna lay out like my swim lanes for me, right? <laughs> yeah. It's gonna lay the swim lanes. So I know on the low side, okay, this is an as is a $55,000 uh, asset and if it's fixed up it's 120 and then I can go look and I can see track the values on what how things have sold and then I can go look at okay well what's on the market today what if I were on the market today what's my um, what's my competition and I can look at uh, you know what kind of price reductions have there been what's that tell me about that market right if I see stuff that's getting slashed then it's like ugh. Maybe it's a declining market. Do I have to figure that into my valuation? So, you know, and then of course I'm going to get a BPO to kind of back up my armchair valuation. But that's it's the important thing is like getting in there and being able to not just say, okay, this is their value, that's the value. But look at how do they get to that value? Who? Zillow? Whoever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just wondering if it's the seller you're saying or is it? No, the Zillow. Yeah. Or, how do they come up with that value? How do they, how do yeah, what, what's their algorithm pulling from? Mm -hmm. And really it's just, you know, it's just for me to get in there and start digging into the details and seeing if it's... You get a, a ballpark of where you're at. Ballpark. So you know if they go way over the, the, the top swim lane, you're like, you're, you're crazy. Because you know, I've, I've looked at all these things. They're saying it's worth 150, and you see like everything you've seen is like 120 is the top. Right, and then you have to ask the question, why? 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 Okay, okay, all right. Moving on. What's the next one? Um, next thing for due diligence is you know it's kind of being able to look at it's it's putting the story together, looking at the collateral file, but really looking at the payment history and the servicing notes, and trying to put together what's the story with this loan. If it's non-performing, why is it non-performing? 
what happened to make it non-performing? Do they want to start paying? Are there means to start paying? Is there a history of sending in loss mitigation packages and then never following through? Is there a history of loan mods that every eight months they do a new loan mod and then they, they pay for three or four months and then they fall behind? So those are all super, like, you gotta be able to put the, put the story together. You gotta read between the lines, you know? Would you still buy something if someone was in that pattern? Hmm, probably. Really? But it would, you know, yeah, I would, but it would just depend on what I'm trying to do. Like, you know, it just, yes, I'm not afraid to do that, but the economics are gonna have to make sense because in that instance, I'm just figuring I'm foreclosing. Mm. Right, so. And then you're basing your, your, also your bid amount on probably the value of the house at that point. Not Absolutely, mm. and I'm figuring in a, healthy foreclosure chunk, uh, foreclosure costs if it's in a judicial state, and I'm probably gonna be figuring in a bankruptcy, f because if they've, if they've got this pattern, yeah. so we gotta figure out how to either break the pattern mm -hmm. or um, accept the pattern. And, and run with it? Yeah, and run with it. I hope they get in a deed in lieu and right. you, you yeah. work out pretty good. Okay, okay, I'm learning, keep going. Um, it, then it's, it's becoming an expert at really um, examining the actual collateral like examining the title, examining the, um, the, the assignment chain. That's, that's like very important because there's human error involved to where somebody may have purchased an asset in um, you know, ABC3 LLC and when they went to sell it, they made a mistake and they have another company called ABC4 LLC and they assigned it out of the wrong company, right? So being able to look at that stuff and, and being able to track like, hey, are the book and page right? Instrument numbers right? Are the borrower's name? How it shows up on the assignment? Is that how it was shown? Is how it was on the mortgage? If it was, you know, Brett and Natasha Berkey as husband and wife on the mortgage, mm -hmm. but it's Brett and Natasha Berkey on the assignment. Sorry. Those are those little things you want to know to look for, and that stuff. That stuff, there, I don't even know if there's like a, a class that goes into the details of all the potential screw-ups that could happen. I think Paige. Paige maybe has one of like all the little stuff to look at, but I mean, it's a lot. And you, just, lot. And you just need to, that's a, that's a detail-oriented person's. So that's why I would get somebody else to do it for me. Yes, which leads me into the last <laughs> bonus piece we have. <laughs> Such a great segue. Um, have a team and outsource. Oh, okay. That's what I recommend because all the stuff that we talked about is great. Um, and some of the stuff you have to have no matter what, having a plan, that's super important. Um, Can't outsource that. No, you know, knowing the docs to ask for, that's important. Mm -hmm. um, when it starts coming to armchair valuations, I think that's important, but really how do you do that at scale? Oh. It's tough, right? Yeah. It's kind of stuff, putting that story together. Are there, are there companies out there that do? There are. Yeah. There are companies that will do all of that for you. There's companies that you can request all the documents, you have your plan, mm -hmm. you give them everything, they look through, they can give you valuations, they can order your BPOs for you, they can go through and scan and read all the servicing notes for you and flag stuff and then color code them on levels of um, severity. severity. They can examine the collateral and really, yeah, don't ask me to tell you all of the ones out there that do this. If we, we can get a list together for people who are looking for those, yeah, those I mean, companies. Is that decently priced? Um, I, I think I used a company um, and I paid, I want to say it was $250 alone. $250 alone. $250 bucks alone. Interesting. Yeah, that but, was it stopped me from buying two separate, I think I've talked about this before, it stopped me from buying that the two loans. That, the house that had no roof? Well, no, it had a roof, but it had a hole in the back and you could never see it from the front. Right. You would, and it was a hurricane, there was hurricane damage. Right, Panama So City. Yeah, Panama City, that's correct. So I have talked about it. Yeah. Um, and, and if I was going through those servicing notes, uh, there's a great chance I would have found it. But also, um, there's a little bit of credibility, or a lot of credibility when it goes to a note seller. When you say, here, I need to request these documents, you need to send it over to Company A, or Company a who's, doing, who's doing my um, you know, doc review, collateral review. Because then they know you're a player. Yeah, well, it's like, hey, th this is okay. a professional. Mm -hmm. they they're, 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 they're doing mm -hmm. this, and there's a good chance that they, they, 
they've worked with this company in the past, they're more comfortable just doing professional professional, so it just helps out. So, so plan, know what to ask for, uh, be able to get to a ballpark valuation, put the story together, you know, examine the collateral, and then finally, hey, if you're gonna scale, you better have a team and start to outsource. Nice, okay, cool. Sound good? Sounds good, well, I guess we'll see you guys on the next one. All right, all right.